Good day guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, we'll be looking at a coin that you guys have voted for on our Telegram chat and that is The Key. The Key is a very promising coin, so hang out with us for the next few minutes to find out what this coin is all about. I guarantee you won't regret it. Whether we like it or not, the world is moving towards centralized identification. Over the past 10 years, governments have been centralizing identity for ease of communications across various government services and departments. For example, in Australia, where I live, the centralized identity system is called MyGov and it links the Social Benefits Taxation Office, Child Support, Health Records, Housing Registration, National Disability Insurance and more. Now imagine if the central identification system was replaced with a non-governmental organization and because it was a non-governmental organization, it could impartially serve as the middleman or validator between government organizations and private services like private health funds, private legal firms, banks, etc. Now imagine an even bigger scale with me. Imagine that you have an ID company that can bridge ID verification internationally across borders, across governments and across private organizations. For example, the example that The Key gives in their white paper is of someone who has a health insurance in China could potentially move to another country like Singapore and get a health insurance scheme there easily because their identification and history is easily verifiable. How crazy is that? This is a world-changing vision that will involve billions of people and billions of transactions and that is what The Key project is all about. The key is a second generation identification system that is designed to be used on a global scale in partnerships with private organizations, governments, as well as individuals. You might think that the scale of this project is too big. It sounds nice, but you're never going to get governments to let you have access to their database of personal information, which is what you need for a project of this scale. Now, let me ask you, what country comes to mind when I say, one of the biggest countries in the world that has been most difficult or resistant towards cryptocurrency growth. Two names would likely pop to mind. One would be China and the other is the US. Both of these countries are superpowers who have taken the harshest stance against crypto projects, banning ICOs, instilling a lot of fear and harsh regulations into the crypto space. These two governments are the least likely to partner with a project like the key, which will require them to relinquish data of personal information of their citizens, right? But the key already has a partnership with China. Their first generation of IDV or identification verification system is already deployed and currently working in China on a national level social insurance scheme that has seen their technology used in 41 Chinese cities and with 130 million people. Their database of personal information currently is already 210 million people from 66 cities. In a recent interview with their CEO, she revealed that their plan was to cover the entire China in five years, targeting 1.4 billion people. She also said that the reason the Chinese government is using them as a project is not because they have any previous relationship with China, but simply because China needs their service and technology. As a company, they currently have 23 copyrights and 14 patents accepted by the CIPO and were voted the most valuable project of the year 2017 by the All China Women's Federation. They have six national labs set up together with government agencies, banks, insurance companies and a university and they are also currently in talks with other governments like Singapore and Hong Kong. So guys, the key as a project is not a blockchain project that is trying to build itself up from scratch and take off which is what most blockchain projects are trying to do. The key is one of the world's biggest IDV companies and has already taken off with millions of users and is now simply integrating blockchain into its existing technology. By use case, this project should be one of the biggest in the crypto market. The only reason that this project is not at the top of the crypto market is because people are simply not aware of it. A lot of Chinese crypto projects are not capturing market attention because of their unattractive names, which are literal translations from their Chinese names. For example, The Key, High Performance Blockchain, 
Internet Token. These are all Chinese projects that names are more like descriptions rather than an attractive brand. It's because Chinese names tend to be quite deep and meaningful, but when you translate them to English, they sound silly and chunky. But if it was the other way around and you were to translate the name Ripple into Mandarin and you told it to a China layman who doesn't know crypto, he would laugh and he says it would sound silly for a financial um, project. But someday, all these Chinese companies with great technology and working products, they're most likely going to have a rebrand just the way NShares did to become NEO and then the Western world will take notice of them and then they will moon. So projects like the Key, which have a great working product already, I think they are super undervalued and just based on their use case, I think this is a coin that should easily be in the top 20 if not the top 10 crypto. But for now, let's dive a little bit deeper into the project. Now, blockchain is all about decentralization. It's about taking the profits of the middleman and redistributing it to the masses. Unfortunately, ID verification is going to be an increasingly centralized system for ease of communications across services. This is going to happen with or without blockchain. What I like about the key is that they bring a decentralization to this centralized system. Let me explain what I mean. The decentralization happens at two levels. Firstly, the ecosystem level and secondly, the technical level. Now, usually our data gets collected by the government, whether we like it or not. And then we have to pay for the services that have collected our data, for example, tax and insurance, etc. The key creates an ecosystem where there are three main parties in each transaction. There is the user, the individual like us, there is the service provider, like the government, the tax agency, etc. And then there is the validator, which is the key. So the person who validates uh, and controls the data, the personal data. The advantage of having the key as a third party is that they provide a larger source of data than even the government's own data set because their pool of data is international as well as for multiple organizations. So even more than the government's own data. So the government's and service provider will be keen to use them. And here's how it works. The key will actually pay individual users for authorizing them the key to use their data, which means that individuals like you and me will for once have control of our data and we will get paid where we allow services to use our data. So that's brilliant because that's decentralization where the profits of this whole personal data market is not just centralized on one body, but is distributed amongst all parties. The key database will also be a dynamic database, meaning that it will keep growing and changing. But when a service provider like a bank is using the key to access individual data, they will have to pay firstly a small fee to the key as a validator, of which the individual user will also get a small cut of that fee. The service provider, which is the bank, will then retain a copy of the user data for its own future record. However, the data that they keep is static, meaning it is not automatically updated. So the next time the user visits the bank again, the bank cannot just use the static data because it might be outdated. So then they have to update the record. And where they update the record, it means that they're going to use the key service again, which means they're going to pay the fees again. The fee is not very expensive, it's meant to be cheap and affordable and the service provider will earn money back from the key as well as individual users by providing whatever service they are supposed to provide. So if it's banking, they provide a banking service. Now every interaction between all parties in this ecosystem is done via smart contracts which run on naked TKY tokens. So this means that the whole ecosystem uh, runs on the native token and there's a lot of token use. A lot of token use means a lot of token demands, which means a lot of token rise in price. It's good traction for the price. So all in all, it's a very good, smart, fair and decentralized payment system. The next level of decentralization in the project is in their tech. Now, the reason why the key is integrating blockchain into their tech is because as their database of personal information grows, they have to ensure that the data is kept securely, immutably, and irreversibly. The blockchain is used in BDMI to help to ensure that the data will never be lost or tampered with. 
Because imagine if you store your data on a centralized uh, storage like a cloud server and one day that cloud server broke down or was hacked into or was destroyed, suddenly the entire network is non-functioning and all the government services attached to it can't function. That will be a national level disaster. So blockchain as a decentralized storage is the safest way to store information and ensure that it is never tampered with. Now, due to the volume of data expected to be stored on the blockchain, not all the data can be stored on the blockchain, or if they did, it would really potentially slow the blockchain down. So this is a problem that the team is still working on, but the options that are proposed at the moment include saving most of the data on a separate database on the key, and only the hash value of the data, so a summary version of the data, will be stored and processed on the blockchain. Now, after you combine the two technologies, blockchain and DMI, you end up with a very nice three-layer architecture that is the architecture of the BDMI, the new technology. The first layer is the protocol layer, and this is simply the blockchain layer, which manages the data and provides authority and security of the data. The second layer is known as the interface layer, and this is where the data on the blockchain can be connected to apps. So this is where the smart contract and the DMI features like the standardization happens. The third layer is the application layer, and this is where your SDK or your software development kit and interfaces mixes. Basically, what this means is that this is the layer where all the ID collected and processed can now be applied to various use cases. One of those use cases, to give you an example, is known as the biometric profile. So this is more than just a digital ID like your passport number. Right? The biometric profile is an ID that will recognize your biology, your body. So it will recognize your fingerprint, your face, etc. So if you open a doorknob that has a fingerprint recognize, recognition process, it will recognize you. If you are a wanted criminal at the airport, the ID as you go through the customs will pick you up. Uh, you can be recognized through your biometric profile. For example, let's say if you got into a car accident and you lost your memory and you lost your wallet, just based on your face alone, the hospital will be able to identify you and treat you accordingly if you had any um, special needs, uh, medical needs. So basically what I'm trying to say is that the key as a project is not just the world's best storage for ID data, they are possibly also the world's best at presenting and using the ID data. That's why a big government like China would use them. This is the team behind the project. It's a rather impressive team. Their anchor person is their CEO, Ms. Catherine Lee. She is very experienced in big data technology, medical informatics with degrees in computer science as well as previously being a physician in the hospital. She has also previously been in charge of large corporation projects as well as having experience in Canadian International Research Council. She was the founder of DMI Technology and the first in the world to provide IDV on internet which has since been accepted by government, banks, etc. Some of the companies she has been with before include a company that is now worth 20 billion in market cap. In 2017, she won the Most Outstanding Women Entrepreneur in China Award and she also won the Champion and Bronze Prize Award of the China Social Security Data Application Championship in 2017. So definitely a very um, high flyer, someone who's very capable and has the capabilities to produce a project such as this. You can also go through the rest of the resumes for the team in your own time. I'll summarize it as a technically heavy but very competent team. Now, sometimes in teams that are technically heavy, we worry about whether they're doing enough marketing. But in this case, seeing that they are already getting government partnerships and they are spreading to over 66 cities with over 130 million use cases, I don't think we need to worry about their marketing. These are their two advisors. He's Roger Lim, CEO of WebVision, which is one of the largest hosting service providers in Asia, as well as the partner of InnoSight Ventures. And the other advisor is Qingyue Chen, who is the founder of Jun IP, venture investor and expert in blockchain financing system designer. These are their strategic partners, which includes NEO, OnChain, China Unicom, Tsinghua Unigroup, etc. So a lot of big names here. And Financial here is also part of the Alibaba group, which Catherine, their CEO, has confirmed they are partners with, as well as IBM that is not listed here. Also not listed on their website is Ontology. Ontology and the key are actually working very closely together in the same ID ecosystem, where Ontology focuses on the cross-chain aspect and the key focuses on the IDV aspect. 
Also, the founder of NEO, Da Hongfei, is also an angel investor in the project. So as you can see, this project has a lot of big names that believe in it. This is their roadmap. The roadmap only goes until the end of 2018, and then we expect it to be updated again. And it ends, it's really focusing, this roadmap focuses on their tech, and it ends with their mainnet being launched in December of 2018. Currently, they are on the NEO platform, but they are planning to launch their own blockchain soon. And this is actually very important, I think, and I'll explain why in just a minute. The actual roadmap, as I said, is mainly for the tech. It's not really about their ecosystem. But the ecosystem probably goes a whole lot bigger than this. And the CEO has already mentioned in interviews that the bigger plan is to reach the whole China in five years. They are also in discussions with other governments at the moment, which include Singapore and Hong Kong. And they plan to include Europe and US over the next couple of years. So the ecosystem side of the roadmap is probably a long hotel. And probably in five to 10 years time, this project will still be growing. The next major milestone on their tech roadmap to look out for is in June 2018 when the BDMI and their testnet will be ready. So this is going to be a huge milestone because BDMI is their main technology and testnet is the testnet. So it's looking like May is going to be a good time to get in as an investor if I was thinking of doing so. Now, in terms of points of consideration, I just have one point of consideration for this project, and that is scaling. They are currently running 130 million profiles for insurance. And insurance is not something that you have a transaction with every single day, just once in a while. So um, in the future, if they are planning to expand to 1.4 billion people, which is more than 10 times the current number, as well as they plan to include other services that will have much more frequent transactions, for example, health services and banking, then the workload of transactions on the whole system is going to increase exponentially. So we're literally looking at millions of transactions per second at least. And this is why I say it. I think that it's important that they leave NEO at some point to start their own blockchain. NEO is a good platform, but NEO currently is only running at 1,000 transactions per second, and NEO has plans to scale up to 10,000 transactions per second. But even if NEO had more scaling options with Trinity or HPB hardware, it would be hard to see NEO scaling up to a million transactions per second, which is what I think these guys need at least. Also keep in mind that scaling is more than just transaction speed. It also includes issues of bandwidth and data management, including storage. And the project in their white paper have already identified storage as a potential problem that they are working on. So they have highlighted some potential solutions for some of the problems. Uh, and this means that they're going in with their eyes open. But I think that moving forward as a potential investor, I'm definitely very interested to um, look out for any news of uh, scaling solutions with the project. Finally, rounding up with a price prediction. When they open on the markets in mid-January, they open on the markets at uh, 3.1 cents, and then they rose to 3.9 cents. It wasn't a very big rise because there was quite a bit of unhappiness about their ICO. Basically, the ICO was very popular. They hit their hard cap by the time they finished pre-ICO, and then they had an ICO which was very popular and sold out within an hour. But because the ICO wasn't done well with smart contracts, but it was actually done manually. So there were a lot of hiccups, including the website crashing and many potential investors who managed to get on the whitelist, but missed out on the opportunity to invest. So there was a lot of dis disappointment and um, unhappiness about how the ICO was done. Nonetheless, the price did go up about four times from the ICO price, which was about one cent. And currently they are sitting at 1.9 cents, which is only about 50% or less than 50% of their all time high. So it's definitely still a very attractive price to get in. The overall market cap as well is only 86.6 million, which is tiny for a blockchain project, much less a blockchain project of this scope. The closest comparison on the market at the moment is probably the ontology project who deals with identity and trust as well. Ontology currently has a market cap of 920 million. If the key ever reaches there, which it should, then that alone would be over 10x gains. 
But the truth is there is really nothing equivalent to compare the key to. You can't even compare it to ontology because where ontology is still building itself up, the key is already up and running with China government partnerships, over 100 million users, over 15 patents, won a national award. So the key is really quite a bit ahead as a project. It's just really very undervalued at the moment. I think that we are at a very unique point in history where we are seeing two things in the blockchain space that we've never seen before. The first is that we are starting to see big investors like government and big companies showing interest in blockchain products. I mean, two years ago, there was no way you would see governments talking about minting their own cryptocurrency or supporting blockchain projects. Nor would you see big companies like Starbucks or Samsung or YouTube express interest in blockchain projects. At two years ago, it was still blockchain as a technology was too early in its developmental stages and too risky. The second thing that we are seeing come into the blockchain space are some very choice projects like the key or nuclear vision where they are actually companies that have been in the scene a working uh, company for the last three or four years with actual working products they are only just now coming into the market as a crypto coin but in terms of the company the company has already lasted for three or four years and this is important because it lowers the risk tremendously of investing in these projects. Now, 80% of the new ICOs failed in 2017, which means 80% of projects that tried to be a blockchain project failed. So that's a very high um, failure rate, but it makes the investing in the whole crypto market a very high risk issue. I think the big project when we invest these days is to ask a simple question, which is, will the project that I'm investing in last in over the next three to five years? And blockchain is in such early days with so much potential for growth that if a project, a blockchain project can last, the price of the project will almost certainly rise. And this is where I don't really understand. Many people investing in projects today in crypto, um, they are investing in projects that actually have no working product yet. And yet those coins or those projects have multi-billion dollar market caps. But they're actually really risky because it's all conceptual. You don't really know if they can deliver a working product. So personally, I think that projects that have either big investors or a working product and have been in the market for a while are a much safer investment because you have this assurance that they're going to be hang around because they have been around for a while. There are still high risk investments because crypto is always a high risk investment, but definitely, you know, you can sleep better at night being believing that these companies are going to be around in three years time. So the, the valuation of different projects at the moment just uh, sounds to me how irrational the whole crypto market is. If you go to a mature investment market like the stock market, there's no way this will happen. Okay, It's the companies that have actual working products and actual value that are high in the market cap. What I think will happen is that over the next few years, I expect the crypto market to mature as a investor and we will start to see the project with real tech like the key really start to take off after the and have a very high market cap and then the young younger conceptual projects will have a lower market cap and really only take off after the working product comes out that's what i think will happen um, so i think the key is quite a long-term hodl and the price that it is now just under two cents i think this is a bargain uh, this is a coin that i potentially see 50x even 100x i mean i don't have any other crypto project to compare it with so it's all speculation but think about it this way right if you were to 100x this coin 100 times this coin they would be worth 8 billion only okay now recently okay eos without a mainnet yet okay uh, without a single debt or app on this platform yet it reached a market cap of 17 billion no, nothing against EOS. I think EOS is a great project. And I know that EOS and the key are very different projects and you can't really compare them side to side. Um, but what I wanted to point out is if a promising project like EOS that doesn't really have an actual use case at the moment, okay, but it's just because it's promising, it can be worth 17 billion for its potential, then why can't a project like the key with its achievements be worth much more? You know, if the key ever reached 17 billion, that's over 200x return. Will the key ever reach that kind of market cap of 17 billion? 
Sure, I think so. Okay, With the scope of this project and its early market advantage and the government partnerships that are coming its way, uh, I definitely see it as a multi-billion dollar project. Okay, um, I may be wrong, guys. This is all my personal opinions. I'm not a professional or financial advisor, and I'm definitely not telling you to buy this coin. I'm just sharing with you that personally, I'm rather bullish on this coin, but please always do your own research and make your own decisions. Anyway, that's it guys. Those are my thoughts on the key. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like it, do give us a like and a subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Also, do join us on our Telegram group. We have great news and updates from the whole community, not just myself. Also, just today, we started a simple but fun game on our Telegram, which is where anyone can invest an imaginary $1,000 for the next three days. Uh, uh, so in three coins over the next 10 days and after that we're just going to compare to see whose imaginary portfolio has gone up the most so there's no actual money involved no actual risk involved we're just doing this for fun and bragging rights within our own community feel free to join us it costs nothing and basically the more people participate in this the merrier we also have a special video that will be coming up later this week. Make sure you look out for that. I won't tell you what it is. It's a nice surprise, but it's the first time we're going to do something like that as a channel and it's going to be awesome. So have a great day wherever you are, guys. Take care and goodbye for now.